Hi, there's no doubt been a time where you have wanted to charge users for accessing your API. With Stripe metered billing, we can do that. We can charge users on a per request basis. So let's dive in and see how we can do that with our GraphQL API. Here we have a simple GraphQL server with Express.js. We're also building the schema using the GraphQL tools package for schema, and we have some dummy data in our resolvers. We are then making the executable schema using the GraphQL tools package, and then we're instantiating a new Express app. We also have a endpoint, which we are using GraphQL HTTP, where we are passing the schema, and we are enabling the headers for the graphical. And then the server is running on localhost 4000 in this example. And if we head to the graphical interface, we can create a query to fetch the products from our API. We only have one, it's just for the example of this video. But what we want to do in this video is we want to charge users or our customers for every time they make a GraphQL request. We'll be using the Stripe API to charge our customers. Specifically, we'll be using the metered billing feature. This allows us to create usage records for each request and we can charge the user any amount we specify. So you'll see we have different usage types. So let's dive into the dashboard and see what this looks like. Now let's create a new product. Let's give our product a name of API All Access. We won't actually go into the detail of implementing the checkout for users to subscribe to this product. I'll leave that part to you but we'll be using this product in our subscription to send with every request so we can charge users. If we scroll down, we'll keep the pricing model as standard and the recurring will be a monthly basis. But let's set a price to £1.50 for every request. We'll need to mark this as a metered usage price. And here we'll just keep the sum of usage values during the period. You can learn about all of the differences between of these in the Stripe documentation. Next, let's go ahead and save that product. And now we have this product here where we have a price. Now let's go ahead and create a new customer and a new subscription. You'll see here I have two customers already, but we'll go ahead and create a new customer. We'll add that customer to the account. And now if we go and edit this customer, we can add a new subscription from the Stripe dashboard. Of course, your customer may do this inside of your own website or using something like the Stripe Checkout or Billing Center. We'll choose that we want to pick the product that we've just created for API All Access. This will charge our users £1.50 per unit and a unit in our instance will be a API request and those will be charged monthly. The quantity in which we pass to Stripe, that depends on what we code inside of our API server, and we'll do that next. Then we can choose to automatically charge that customer if they have a payment method on file, or we can send them an invoice to be paid within a certain time frame. Let's go ahead and create that test subscription. And now if we open the subscription, if we scroll down, we'll be able to see that we have a subscription item ID. I'm going to copy this for the clipboard because we'll need this when we build the server for accepting these requests. We'll be using a few different packages throughout this tutorial. The first one will be Throng, which simply allows us to spin up new workers in case anything goes down in an existing one. We'll be using the Heroku CLI to run this locally, so this will make sense in a few moments. Next, we'll be using the Bull package. This is a simple queuing system that relies on Redis. You'll need to install Redis if you haven't already done so, but Bull will allow us to send jobs to a queue that will be processed in the background. We don't want to slow our requests down, so it's important we make all of the requests to Stripe inside of a delayed job. Then inside of the server.js file, we'll go ahead and create a new queue from the bull package. We'll need to declare the Redis URL. I'll be using my local instance of Redis, but if you have an environment variable set with that, or you're using something like Docker, you can read from that and use that one. Then let's go ahead and create our first queue where we'll give it a name and we'll pass the Redis URL. Now let's go ahead and declare the API keys for our users. The API key value for our user one will resolve to the subscription item ID that we got from Stripe. 
In a real world application, your API keys would be stored in your database and the subscription IDs, well, those would belong to a user or a project within your database. We'll need to create some middleware with Express.js where from the request headers, we fetch the authorization key and value. Then from our API keys object, we want to fetch the value for where the key matches what we passed in as authorization. In this instance, we'll pass in user one and it will provide us the subscription ID that we'll need to use when calling Stripe and we'll do that next. So for the purposes of this video, we'll console log that ID. And if we run the server and head on over to the graphical interface and we make a request and we pass in the authorization header as user one, that will then show us the ID in the console. Then inside of the middleware for our server, instead of logging out the subscription item ID, we'll pass this along to the usage queue that we created above. Now we are adding this to the queue, we'll now need to create a worker to process what goes on in this queue. So inside of the root of our project, let's create the file worker.js. First, we'll need to require the bull package, then throng and stripe. With stripe, we can pass the stripe secret key, and it's important that we save this within our .env file. Because we'll be using the Heroku CLI to run the server and the worker, this will automatically send the environment variables to the request and make those available to both server and the worker. If you head to the developer section inside of your Stripe dashboard, you can find your API keys. I would recommend that you use test data here. And if you scroll down, you can reveal your test key and you can use that inside of your server file. Inside of the worker, we'll declare a function that we pass to throng that can run that and restart that when required. Then inside of that, all we need to do is declare the code that is processed for each of the jobs that need ran. I'm declaring workers here, which will be provided by the Heroku CLI, or when you deploy to Heroku, you'll get an amount of concurrent workers that you can run. We'll just define this as workers. Then we'll need to grab the Redis URL that we had from before. And then again, we'll go ahead and we'll grab that same queue and we'll instantiate this inside of the start method. You could abstract this out into its own file and import it, but for the purposes of this, we'll just keep it in here. Then inside of the process method for our queue, we'll go ahead and we'll destructure the subscription ID from what we passed in to the job data. Now we can use that to pass along to Stripe. Inside of a try catch block, we'll make a request to Stripe. The first argument that we need to provide will be the subscription item ID, and then the second object will pass along the quantity. Here it will be one because this will be one request and we'll say this is equal to one unit inside of Stripe. Then for the purposes of this video, we'll just go ahead and we'll console log that error. If we save that and run Heroku local and we pass a file to the procfile.dev, we'll need to in here also run the worker. So I'm going to define worker as node worker and now inside of here, if we run the Heroku local with our local proc file, inside of graphical, if we run a few different requests here, this will send a job to the bull queue. Once those are then processed, if we head on over to Stripe and we refresh the subscription for our user, and if we scroll down, we can see in the upcoming invoice for the API all access price that we have four units sold. So for the four different API requests, we charge the user £1.50 per request. A bit expensive, I know. But we can now see that we have a total amount due for this customer.